you're out there in L.A., you're thinking about investing in Cleveland, Ohio, you're not alone. A lot of people from California are coming to the Cleveland market, and I am the number one resource to help you guys navigate the good and the bad in the Cleveland market. Just because it's cheap don't necessarily mean it's going to be a good deal, folks. I am here to help you. Today, we're going to go over a property that appears to be good, but... <laughs> My spidey senses is tingling. I'm just kidding. They're not. They're not really tingling. That that would mean like I had a hunch it's bad, but I don't because I actually thought it was good too. But I actually was involved very heavily with this deal, so I was there. I know what happened. So I just I just happen to have firsthand knowledge. But guess what? I'm giving it to you. Let's go. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James Wise, and today's show is about a duplex sent to me by my clients, Lewis and his lovely lady, Jessica. Lewis, how did some ugly bastard like you tie down such a lovely lady like her? That's what I want to know. Now, speaking of ugly bastards, how about this ugly bastard? Ah, this house right here. 630 East Ave, Valeria, Ohio, 44035. Priced at 78900 It's a duplex, right? And you two, you two have been looking at uh, properties, multifamily, out in the Northeast Ohio area, places like Elyria, places like Lorraine. And what you have probably noticed, I mean, I know you've noticed it. You've been outbid several times. Bidding wars are happening. Things are just flying off the shelves, okay? Right? So this one, I'm going to give you a little teaching moment. I happen to know uh, for a fact this deal is not going to go through. I will explain why, but I'm also going to give you guys some red flags to know, right? Like at this point, you guys realize like duplexes in these areas are selling for like, a hundred, hundred fifteen, hundred twenty, hundred twenty-five thousand dollars in days. Okay, if you look at this one, it's been on the market for a hundred four days, and it's priced at seventy-eight grand, right? So it's like twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty thousand dollars cheaper than stuff that flies off the market immediately. So there's something's not right, right? It's cheaper and it's not selling. Why isn't it working? Luckily for you guys, you're working with me. So you're going to get the ins and the outs, right? Because I, like you, was like, okay, I'm high on this duplex. This is a good deal. This could look good, right? Uh, as I talk to you two, right, this is episode uh, This is episode 1,929. Nope, I'm sorry, I lied. 1,919. This is episode 1,919. I originally looked at this property 600 episodes ago, right? 1,000. 323, I looked at this property, and I'll, I'll leave you guys with that footage so you can see my original thoughts in case you're curious. Uh, and I actually ended up going under contract on this property, okay? But we got no deal here. Uh, the listing agent is just an idiot. He's just, he's just an idiot. It, it, like, we just we had to leave the deal because the guy just wasn't doing his job. Uh, he just would not answer, uh, wouldn't answer emails, wouldn't answer the phone. Couldn't get an inspection coordinated. The guy just would not do anything, right? And that is probably why it is still sitting here on the market priced way lower than it should be, but nobody's buying it, right? Like this deal should have sold within five seconds, right? For like 30 grand above market. Honestly, I looked at the 600 episodes ago. The market wasn't even anywhere near as hot as it is like today. As I talk to you, in episode 1,919, totally different market than episode 1,323. And it was a good deal back then, right? So, uh, you know, you, you see a listing like this. When it's too good to be true and it's been on the market this long, there's something wrong, right? In, in this particular situation, I just have firsthand knowledge. Like, the, the guy just wouldn't do his job, right? You send him an email, you either get nothing, you send him 10, uh, and, you know, he'll answer, like, one of, like, five questions. It, it just confused. We couldn't get the inspectors in there. Uh, we just had to walk away. Here's the thing, folks. Not all real estate agents are created equal. What a lot of people don't understand about real estate is anybody can become an agent, really. It takes, like, two weeks to get your license in Ohio. And as far as, like, getting a job at a brokerage, 
uh, brokers, more or less, like your large brokers, your big franchises, you know, the ones you've heard about in every state, uh, they, they will hire anyone because essentially the realtor is actually their customer. Like you don't get a salary, right? Uh, you bring in commission. Essentially, you pay the broker. Some brokers charge you a monthly fee that you got to pay every single month, right? So large brokerages are set up. Uh, to where essentially the real estate agent is more or less the customer. I used to have a lot of agents too. At one point, Holton Wise had like seventy. I had like seventy agents through my doors. Got rid of all of them. Not what you think, folks. It's very difficult, right? Uh, na nationally, it's like eighty-five to ninety percent of uh, real estate agents turnover every year. So, like, if you meet ten real estate agents that all became agents this year, next year. Nine of them will no longer be real estate agents. That means they failed. All right. They were so bad at their job or found something better. They are no longer agents. Nine out of 10. So you're going to find that a lot. And when you come out here to the Cleveland market, a lot of people think that like $80,000 houses, $100,000 houses are like all we have in Ohio. It's not the case, right? Like my neighborhood, right? Like I live in an area where the minimum price on my street is like five hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay, we have expensive houses uh, in Ohio as well. All right, so what you need to understand is when you're dealing in these low cost properties like this, you're dealing with essentially the bottom bottom rung of agents, right? Because the agents that one out of ten who typically get good. Uh, they're going to be working in neighborhoods uh, where the houses are three, four, five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars. Because, like, hey, man, three percent of a five hundred thousand dollar deal is a lot more than three percent of a seventy-eight thousand dollar deal, right? Not many agents work the investor crowd like we do here at Holton Wise, right? Holton Wise TV is something completely different, right? Also, uh, the fee structures on these really cheap properties are also why Holton Wise TV has the fee structure that it does, where you have to pay us up front, right? Wouldn't be profitable to work with you uh, under normal circumstances, right? Like if you're out there in LA, you know, you call a realtor, hey, I like this house. I want to go see the house. I want to go tour the house, right? It might be like a $900,000 house, right? It's worth it for them to go show you 20, 30 houses and have you buy one, right? Well, you got 20, 30 houses of this level, right? It's not worth it, right? Might as well go work at McDonald's. So that's why we have our fee structure, right? I am essentially one of the only uh, high quality, high talent level, high earning real estate agents you could find in this market who works this type of asset class. Because... 90% of the agents are typically failing every single year, and the majority, 99.9% .9 of agents, work with traditional buyers and sellers, like driving you around, beautiful suburban house, two kids, 2.5 kids, actually, if we're looking at statistics, white picket fence, Fido running the yard, playing fetch, stuff like that, right? That's not what we do at Holton Wise, right? So when you're in these neighborhoods, oftentimes the level of service from other real estate agents uh, can sometimes be lacking. And that was the case in this one, which is why, again, 104 days on the market for a property that is currently priced <laughs> like 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars less than similar ones. So uh, I wish we could sell you the property, but I don't even know if it's for sale anymore. Oftentimes, too, what you'll get is uh, sometimes agents and their clients, they'll get into a dispute. Client no longer wants to sell. But hey, uh, there's a saying in the real estate industry. It's called listers last. What that means is you want to get listings if you're a real estate professional. By the way, any realtors watching this out there, if you're a brand new realtor thinking about becoming a realtor, pro tip, listers last. This makes a lot of sense. Pay attention so you don't fall into the 90% category that fail. Uh, when you get listings, guys, you get buyers, okay? Whenever you get a listing, it's like having the beehive, right? If you want to find honey, you go to the beehive, okay? All right? You want to get bees, you go to the beehive. That's where all the bees go. You don't go chasing the bees. You find the hive, right? Think of it that way, right? So if you're just trying to market to buyers, which is what a lot of people do and they fail, it's very, very hard because uh, you're only marketing to buyers, and buyers are not as profitable as sellers. But guess what? You could just market directly to sellers, and then you know what you get? You get all the buyers for free anyway, right? You get one listing, maybe 50 people reach out to you. Well, guess what? You can only sell it to one person. So now you got 49 new buyer leads. Think, okay? So it's also common sometimes when you have, the reason I'm going into the story is you could sometimes have situations like this uh, where they originally listed a property, things fall apart with the seller, 
and uh, it's not a deal is never going to happen, but the the agent will leave it up on the MLS because guess what? That just generates a ton of leads, right? Joe Blow Buyer. Hey, man, I saw your deal at 630 East. Oh, uh, yeah, we got issues with that one. But I tell you what, how about this property, right? It's how they convert a lead, okay? Uh, I don't believe that's what's happening here because I was in the transaction with this agent. But, you know, it is very possible. I did kind of poo-poo on that guy for being an idiot. It's, I guess it's possible his seller uh, is just ghosting him. And he wasn't, he was ghosting us because he was getting ghosted, right? Uh, I guess that's a possibility too. And he didn't just feel like, you know, laying out his dirty laundry for me. I guess that's possible too. Uh, so it could be either, really. But the moral of the story is been there, done that, tried to buy the damn thing, tried to get a deal done 600 episodes ago. Looks like it's great. Unfortunately, Bad deal. Red flag of the day is if you see something that's way cheaper and everything else and it hasn't sold, there's probably a reason for it. What we'll do now, uh, Lewis and Jessica, uh, I will also uh, have you guys go ahead and just see that original footage from 600 episodes ago. So we'll take a quick break. Then if you guys want to stick around and see what I originally thought before I knew all of this, that's where it is. Hi, my name is Terry. And given my unique status as an undead killer clown, I found my job opportunities to be fairly limited throughout my life. Then, once the COVID shutdowns hit, I, like many other Americans, found myself in a really tough financial position. After I lost my job, I couldn't even take care of my wife and kids, let alone think about anything like financial freedom. All my hope was lost. I was stuck in a downward spiral of despair and drinking. I was looking for answers, but I didn't know where to turn. I didn't know what to do. Then, then one day, everything changed for me. I discovered Holton Wise TV and how to invest in real estate. And my whole world, my whole outlook changed. And it could do the same for you if you click the link below. Welcome back, folks. This this is the good part of the show. The meat and potatoes, okay? 6.30 East Avaliria, five days on the market, and I believe we're getting a big discount here, $78,900. Now, anybody who's uh, paying attention to my show or understanding what's going on with the Cleveland market knows if you're buying duplexes in decent C-ish grade neighborhoods, you're paying about a hundred grand. This one already deeply discounted at 78.9, and I think we could go a little bit further and get it for about 75. The question, why? Why do we have the ability to pick something that should normally be 100, pick it up for 75? Why? Well, a couple reasons. Number one, when people look at the Cleveland market from all over the world because people are hearing things, they're seeing national publications, articles, this or that, they're hearing that Cleveland's the best cash flow market. Cleveland's the best cash flow market. Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland. All they do is say Cleveland. They forget to mention all the other areas in the greater Cleveland area, the other cities, and investors right from all over the world. They just narrow in on stuff that has a Cleveland address. This doesn't have a Cleveland address. This has an Elyria address, right? Elyria, whoop, getting tied up on the cord here. Elyria is about a half hour west of Cleveland, right? People heard about LeBron James, right? You know, you've heard of LeBron James. I would imagine if you're a living, breathing human being, you know who LeBron James is, right? Everybody knows LeBron James is from Cleveland. Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland. LeBron James ain't from Cleveland, people. No, he's not. LeBron James is actually from a city called Akron. It's about 30 minutes south of Cleveland, right? Southeast, all right? So this is the same distance from the city of Cleveland as LeBron's hometown, but everybody just refers to everything as Cleveland, right? That's great. Because that means all the investors from nationwide are focusing in on the Cleveland properties, and I believe that artificially inflates their price a little bit. And then deals like this one fall through the cracks because nobody's paying attention, right? It's in the Cleveland market. My team, we handle it, $200 million in sales. We have tons of properties over here, right? To us, it's all the same, right? To the locals, it's all the same, right? To out-of-state folks, they don't ever pay attention to that. You never hear of Illyria. There ain't no... National publications, no articles on any investment website you're on where they're like, Elyria is a great place to invest. Nobody's ever said the name Elyria. It's a teeny little suburb, right? Cleveland, the Cleveland market, folks, multiple millions of people, right? I think it's 
three or three to four million people, I believe, is in our metro area. Only like 340,000 of them actually live in the city of Cleveland. Think about that, right? In addition, I actually like the government in Elyria better than the government in Cleveland. Now, that's one reason why the price is so low. Second reason it's falling through the cracks here is, well, the, <laughs> the listing agent, God bless his soul, hasn't done anything. Okay, as far as pictures go, we got one picture, nothing else. What did he have to say about the property? Not a damn thing. A completely blank listing. Didn't say what the rents were. Didn't write not one word about the property. Literally did next to nothing. Bare minimum effort. This is not the appropriate way to market a property, but that's okay. I dug deep, found out some info for you guys. The tenants are paying 500 bucks a month in rent. Now, you have no insight into what's going on at this property. You have no idea what it looks like. You have no idea what the conditions is. Uh, and you don't know what the rents are unless you're talking to me, and I've just told you they're 500 right? So you have no clue what's going on. Well, guess what? Here's the skivvy. Here's what you really need to know. Here's the information you're going to have that everybody else doesn't have. 500 that's below market rent. Month-to-month -month tenants, below market. Your market rates for these units are 650 and 750 We got a 1-1, one, one, a 2-1. Should be bringing in market, 16-8. Of that 16.8, I believe after fixed and variable expense estimates, you'll be netting approximately 78.78. I believe we can get it at 75 because nobody's paying attention to Elyria, number one. Number two, <laughs> the marketing. There's like nothing for anyone to work off of, right? Uh, so because of that, I think we can get it at 75. That means you pick this up only 18750 out of your pocket. Bank kicks in the rest. And that, folks, would be a 27% cash-on-cash cash return if you can get those current tenants up to market rate. We'd want to do so by slowly increasing the rents. We wouldn't want a turnover to occur because I'm going to tell you some more information that's not in the listing. And you know what? This is information that you're going to get when you've sold $200 million worth of real estate. Here's the deal. This is not something you should anticipate. The units are brand spanking new. Now, long-term, month-to-month, below-market rate tenants. When those tenants move out, you're not just sweeping and then putting in new tenants at market rate. No, you're doing a full turnover, right? You're probably looking at like between five and 15 grand, depending on what's going on, right? Uh, walls, carpet, probably new kitchen, new bath uh, fixtures, okay? It's probably what's going to happen. That's what you need to anticipate. So we don't want to just jack their rent up and have them move out because we don't want to spend that money, no. Instead, we go up slowly, 25, 25, 25, and get them up to market rent without ever creating a turnover, never paying for that turnover, right? Turnovers are what kill your returns, guys. Not getting 1000 bucks a month for a $75,000 property. It cash flows right now, okay? So everything we get is going to be cherry, right? You want to get more rent without incurring a turnover. And as far as your big ticket items, roof, hot water tank, furnace, do not expect any of them to be brand new because they are not. Now, back to my chart. As you see, I have a little something here, $840 a year for capital expenditures, okay? That's money you're saving. You actually get that money right now, okay? That's your money. But I'm not allowing you to consider that return, right? It, I don't hold it. It goes to you. So you can spend it on freaking hookers and cocaine if you want. But what you need to understand is that's fairy dust, <laughs> different than the dust you're shoving up your nostrils. Uh, you're not actually making that money because you have some big bills that are going to be coming up. A roof is about $7,000. Roofs last about 30 years. This property don't got a new roof. When we get it inspected by the third-party home inspector, I'm sure it's going to say it's got, you know, the last five years or so of its life cycle, right? Ten, five to ten. It's going to be in the back end. Furnaces cost about three grand. We're going to be in the back end of those. They last 30 years. How water tanks, they cost a grand. We're going to be on the back end of those, right? So they last, uh, cost, cost about a grand to replace, last about 15 years. We're going to be in the back end of all three of those things. That's why I want you saving 840 a year and preparing for when those bills eventually come because they will. But hey, guess what? We're picking this thing up at 75K. And a property basically in the exact same condition, properly marketed with a Cleveland address, we get you a very similar tenant base, very similar rent rates, be in the same or similar condition, and it costs you about 100000 So this deal is a screamer, but ain't nobody but you knows it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.